And I anticipate that we'll continue to see uh, steady progress uh, on inflation over uh, coming months. Uh, but of course, uh, that's really important uh, for American consumers. So we're going to keep uh, our eye on that. Uh, but I anticipate inflation will continue the remarkable right. progress that it's made. An 18-year-old undocumented migrant from El Salvador has been arrested in Mendota for murdering a man and dismembering his body. Fresno County Sheriff's deputies say the teen who has not been named because he was 17 at the time of the alleged killing dismembered 25-year-old Fraley Hernandez back on January 17th. Deputies found Hernandez inside a car in the middle of an orchard near Belmont and Washoe Avenues in Mendota. Officials say Hernandez knew the suspect. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wayne Dupree, and it is Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, at 12.01. We have just, well, uh, it, it looks like it looks like we, um, we got past the, uh, the um, eclipse. We survived. Yeah. It wasn't a rapture, and um, we're here. But uh, glad to be here. Let me introduce the Godfather of Conservative Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, every now and then. Every now and then. Oh, my God. You know, I wanted to say something because I'll forget <laughs> it and because it happens at the end of the show. And about five times, I've wanted to say how I love that outro music. But then we disconnect right away, so I never get to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what, too? Let me let me see something. I, I wonder. I wonder if I can. Uh, hmm. Okay. And then we got also Mr. Jason Robinson. What's up, Jay? Hey, hey, hey! Happy. Oh gosh, what day are we on Tuesday? Where's this week going? Taco uh, Tuesday. Yeah. It, well, it is Taco Tuesday, but you know what? I think I'm gonna make. Well, you know what? Let's jump into um, let's jump into um, some news real quick because uh, believe it or not, people fuss at us because we don't we aren't uh, well um, we mind it various times, but uh, we don't. I don't want to say we're not serious about news because we are, but we're not letting us. We're not letting it kill us. Consume us, right? Exactly, exactly. You know. I mean, teach you. And Mr. Jason Robinson, the Imam of Minnesota. What's up, Jay? Hey, hey, hey. folks! You know, don't forget think, to give us a share. I was think I was thinking right before the show. I was like, "What I need to do? I need to start off the show." Uh, Democrats, this Democrat, that Democrat, 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 Whew. and Democrat and Democrat and Democrat again. But Republican, 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 GOP, donkey, elephant, there. Yeah. Jason. <laughs> imam, Imam, uh, I, um, uh, Somalia, I was Somalia, say, Minnesota. Can we just lock up every politician? Like, <laughs> uh, I, 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 for real, I mean, I saw, I saw somebody yesterday on there, and they were like. You know, um, why don't y'all just stick to one subject? Because there's, there's a lot of subjects out there, man. I mean, this is an old saying. If you can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time, you're in trouble. So uh, there's a lot of things that uh, there's a lot of things that are going on right now. Some, you know, I mean, honestly, the, the way that I look at news, and I actually, I try not to look at it when I get finished the show. I really do. I, I try to rest up a little bit. <laughs> I do. I, I mean, I'm like, God darn. We just did an hour and a half of news, talking about news and stuff. I got to come down. I got to come down. And, you know, I, I mean, then when I wake up, 
around six to seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, what happened? But yeah, uh, yesterday, you know, the, the eclipse came. I went outside. Uh, I have to admit, I mean, I can't see why the Aztecs killed anybody for it, but um, the day looked different. I mean, it it did look, it was dim. Yeah, that's uh, all it was. It was dim. It wasn't it was dark. Dim. No, 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 no. It wasn't I was dark. Like, I was like, it's starting to get brighter out here already. What happened? <laughs> yeah. It's like, man, I've, I've never really experienced this thing they keep talking about, man. It's yeah. dusk. But man in Texas, good Lord. Did you see what happened in Texas? And in Florida, didn't some woman start shooting people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was only a couple incidents, but there was like two or three people that started going crazy and well god here. told her to do it you know right that's the insurance policy yep. um you know we really haven't been talking about trump's trials too much um uh because you know what honestly <laughs> they're all starting to run together i i mean i, I don't know which is which and that's probably uh 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 what they want to happen is, you know, that people are starting to tell the truth now, though, you know, they're starting to say the whole election thing is all about locking Trump up. It's not about anything else. Right. You Which know, he that, wants to get locked up. So, you know, there you go. I'll tell well, you. And the, the Democrats, I mean, this plan is kind of backfiring <laughs> because they're giving him all sorts of free media and they're going after him in ways that average citizens are starting to go, huh? I know it, but you know what? I'm wondering, but I, but I'm also wondering this: How many citizens are going? What do you mean? Well, right? I mean that's that's what, you know what I'm saying. During, during Nazi Germany, people did that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's like, like well, at least they're not coming after the Catholics yet. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I'm looking at this guy thinking, you know, and and I know it's not a, I know it's not Biden. I don't know who it is, but I know it's not Biden. But he is flipping everything, all the traditional normalcy, especially in foreign policy, but not just foreign policy, flipping it on its back, man. I mean, he's supporting Hamas. He's, he's, he's going after voters that are in Michigan screaming death to America. It's yeah. unbelievable to me, man. We've got to wake up from this. And I think we're starting to. I saw a, an article this morning about a 25-year veteran reporter from NPR that admitted everything. He said during the Trump administration, we lied every single day. Yep. Every single day. We, that's a government uh, media outlet, taxpayer funded. You know, we need, I'll tell you what we need and we need it in the worst way. And people need to wake up about this fraud. We need an opposition party. We need a real opposition party because this yeah. Republican party ain't doing it. I was going to say, I think Dina hit the nail on the head. When is the fraudulent government going to be taken down? Exactly. Removal time has come and gone years ago. Because we're not talking about an opposition party so much as it's not. They're both corrupt. Both the Democrats and the Republicans are corrupt. They're centralizing power with the federal government. It's... It's insane. I mean, Joe Biden's forgiving more student loans. That is just an attempt to buy votes. Oh, uh -oh, Wayne's looking serious. Yeah, and, and you know, you have these Republicans coming out, and, and like uh, I talked about yesterday, Mike Turner coming out, the head of the chairman of the uh, House Intelligence Committee, saying that Russian disinformation has infected the, the GOP. No, you've infected the GOP. You and every warmonger like you has infected the GOP, and we don't want any part of it. Right. Well, and I mean, how many how many horrible things do we need to see before Americans wake up? You know, this Russia-Ukraine thing, we're driving ourselves to bankruptcy to fund all these wars around the country and, and fund the illegal immigrants and cities, you know, are having to cut back on police forces. And, and then I saw a report too that came out yesterday that said, well, it turns out all those crime stats, they're just making up because yeah. nobody's actually sending in their crime stats. And what they ought to do is they ought to, 
somebody ought to get a drone, an HD drone with an HD camera on it and fly over the battlefield and show the people with their faces blown off that we're funding. Right. You know, nobody talks about the reality of what we're doing. You know, that those are, that's, that's some serious casualties over there. Well, yeah, but all they do is they show all the images coming out of Israel and Hamas. And I mean, I saw a great video a guy did uh, on an interview with Joe Rogan about that. And he said, Hamas, after the attack, like they embed themselves in the civilians. It's what they've been doing forever. Right. And he, and he said, you know, if unfortunately there's no way to take out Hamas without civilian casualties, although it was interesting, he said the stat showed that there were less civilian casualties than like when we did our Middle Eastern um, forays, so to speak, because it was the same same techniques but you see the left losing their mind about what's going on and you know there's a lot of tragedies in gaza but they elected hamas and And you know the only thing these people are they're savages man nobody wants them in the whole middle east because if it was not for they're coming together to kill israelis to, to to wipe israelis wipe jews off the planet if it wasn't for that there's i heard the the founder of hamas's son was in an interview, man, they wiped those Palestinian supporters out too. But he came out there and he said, if it wasn't for Israel and our hatred for Israel, there's four or five tribes in quote unquote Palestine that he said does not exist. It's a bunch of different tribes and they would be killing each other if it wasn't for Israel. Right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I had to take care of some. It kind of looked like I was talking to y'all, but I was talking to... um, I was talking to our awesome guest, Alan West, who's, who's getting ready to join us in a couple of minutes. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did copy that. Okay. Bad. All right. Um, so what, so, well, I, because I had to mute y'all real quick. What are we talking about again? Hamas and, and Israel and the different uh, people's perspectives and things like that. I mean, just the, the corruption of the warmonger caucus. Yeah, they um, that Israel thing, that Israel thing is really getting out of. When I say it's getting out of, uh, getting out of, uh, the people that are so much against them defending themselves, and and basically that's what it's turning out to be. People are people are saying, uh, you know, you're doing it too, you're doing it too hard. You know, like it, it's like a, <laughs> it's like well. Should we really feel like, you know, should we really feel a way about it? Because remember when when Trump took that, like when Trump buried Bannon, and we felt bad for Bannon, you know, and we were saying, please stop, please. Oh, he did it again. Oh Jesus, <laughs> please. Okay, well maybe just like, nope, he did it. He, he got him again. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, here's here's the situation. They've done this. It wasn't only Hamas before Hamas it was Intifada, and it was the. Palestinian Liberation Organization, the PLO, you remember him, and and uh, Yasser Arafat and the Clintons going over there wearing their kafayas, you know, to suck up to them. They do this every couple of years. And until every time we stop Israel, we've stopped Israel 10 or 20 times from finishing the job. And all that does is guarantee that in 2026, they're going to hit us again. Right. And in 2028, they're going to hit us again. They even have a term for it over there. The IDF has to go cut the grass. That's what they oh, really? call it because it's all the time. It never ends. I've got tapes that I've played on, over the years telling them to stop shelling. It's different groups, but it's all international, and it's all to keep the door open for the massive profits that the military-industrial complex makes supporting Israel and supporting some of the other Arab states. So you either you either take them out or just be ready to keep doing it for generations. Yeah. Well, yeah, and when you're funding both sides of the war, mm-hmm. I mean, it goes. I mean, on- we said aid. We said aid to the Palestinians that immediately Hamas stole. Right. And then they're blaming us for for starving them out. And, and if you look at the left's war on words, the term genocide, mm-hmm. the term genocide was created to talk about the Jewish 
final solution in World War II. And now they're flipping that same word on the IDF, on Benjamin Netanyahu. They're, they're calling him, him committing a genocide. It's unbelievable. Nobody talks about the first, the first 30 days of this thing when they when they raped and burned and oh the savage. And, and they still have hostages. I yes. know. <laughs> American hostages, right. as a matter of fact. Real quick, um I this was a for me. Uh we have a we have a special guest. Um, as a matter of fact, he's a <laughs> he's a monthly contributor to the Wayne Dupree show. Um and uh uh y'all 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 responded so well la- last month when he was on, we decided uh you know we have to connect with him once again on a regular basis. Uh, and I'm talking about Lieutenant Colonel uh retired Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Um before uh let me see, let me uh let me get everything straight here. Um there's there's one thing about Colonel West that many people might not know is that we uh, got <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on, I gotta we got um Put your best in best in show down. yeah, best in show podcast. Damn, that's a long time ago. Yeah, 2014. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, he, he really hasn't aged, to tell you the truth. <laughs> He's oh, timeless. Yeah. He really hasn't aged. What's up, Colonel? How you doing? Good to be with you all. That was I, back I, in the days when they had that lady with that funny accent said, blog talk radio. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to her? Did y'all fire her or something? I mean, no, no. But you know what, too? And I and I think she, I think she's still. Do you know Blog Talk Radio is still out there? Is, is it? Yeah, it's still out there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, y'all were talking well, about Israel, Hamas, and yeah. everything. It's pretty yeah. simple to me. Hamas is a terrorist organization designated Indeed. so. The charter of Hamas says that they are intent on the destruction of. The Jewish people and the entire Jewish nation, the eradication, elimination and extermination thereof. So I don't know what part of this people aren't getting. If a sovereign nation is attacked by a non-state, non-uniform, belligerent terrorist organization, that sovereign nation has every right to destroy that terrorist organization. We would not accept anything less of that here in the United States of America. As a matter of fact, we sent, you know, John Pershing and uh, the United States Army after Pancho Villa when he right. came across the board and attacked the city in New Mexico. So these people that are out there and these folks in Dearborn, Michigan, that are chanting death to America. Right. Look, you know, I, we got a lot of airports. Let's put them on an airplane and send them up out of here uh, because they are aiding and abetting a terrorist organization. If they're American right. citizens, that's a violation of U.S. statute and code. If right. they're not uh, American citizens, let's deport them. Case closed. You know, um, Colonel, I was thinking about that, um, about the American um, portion of that because I'm like, in I mean, from everything that I know about America and pro- probably those that care about America, you usually don't see Americans saying death to America. You really don't see that. And and um, with with what's happening over in Israel or uh, um, in Gaza, for Americans. I don't know. It's, it's almost like a virus that has crisscrossed from coast to coast, and is and 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 I, I don't know whether they're well funded or not, but the crowds are getting larger and larger, mm-hmm. and the and um, you see the Palestinian flag or the PLO flag or what it. It's that's a terrorist right. flag. It's a terrorist it's flag. Yeah. Right. You know, and think about this. Uh, November of last year in New York City. You actually had these pro Hamas supporters rip down on Veterans Day, rip down the American flag off of flagpoles and replace it with that terrorist flag. Look, you know, there's only way that you deal with an ideology that wants to see you and your quote unquote system of government. That's what they said in that rally at uh, in Dearborn, Michigan, to be destroyed, to be replaced. That's sedition. That's not freedom of speech. That's not freedom of religion. That's sedition. And again, Americans taking part in this, that's that's treason. So I think we need to deal with these people harshly. I, I mean, 
L let's be honest. I, I mean, the left always wants to bring up January 6th, but they never want to talk about Antifa. They never want to talk about BLM. Oh, no, by the way, BLM put out a support of Hamas and what they did on October the 7th, which, as J. Rob said, they killed Americans. They took America's hostage. So can you imagine uh, coming out and saying that you su import, uh, supported Imperial Japan after the attack at Pearl Harbor or that you supported uh, Al Qaeda after 9-11 or you supported the Taliban? So, so why are we making these concessions and making things different with uh, this terrorist group, Hamas, which is supported by the number one state sponsor of terrorism? That's our Iran. Iran. Yeah. You know, Colonel, thanks for coming on the show, too, by the way. Appreciate it, Hutch. Um, I'll tell you, you mentioned something about the planes and, and deporting these people. I wonder, I think about it all the time. There's a reason I'm here. There's a reason you're here. There's a reason Wayne and Jay Rob are here and a whole bunch of other people that are fighting a righteous fight here. Uh, I think that I, I wanted to ask your opinion if you thought it's time to start preparing uh, our audience and, and people in the country. We've got to make some tough decisions going forward. I mean, there's some... I don't know what the actual number is. You hear so many, but we've got so many million of illegal invaders in this nation. Mm -hmm. The only chance that we have as survival as a, as a country and as a culture is to remove them physically. And I think that's going to take a dramatic mindset shift for these current generations that are out there now. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I just wondered your opinion on that, sir. Well, no, with, without a doubt, I have never seen a time where we would have the federal government completely abdicating and dismissing its constitutional duty and responsibility to protect the sovereignty of this nation uh, and allowing single military aged males into this country to the point where we have more quote unquote gotaways in this country than we do of active duty United States uh, soldiers and United States Marines. That's unconscionable to me. So at this time when we're allowing people to be released from prison, uh, violent criminals, uh, we're allowing all of these military aged males, terrorists uh, from China and where have you, criminals uh, onto our streets. And you have an administration that's talking about disarming Americans. You have a federal judge in Illinois that says that the Second Amendment also applies to people that are here illegally. We, yeah, we got some serious issues here. And, you know, we have, you know, it was it was Frederick Douglass who once said that in order to maintain this country and this republic, there are three boxes. He said there is the ballot box, there is the jury box, and then there's the cartridge yes. box. And, you know, I don't want to see us get to that point. But when you think about what is the end state, what is the end goal of this Democrat Party, these progressive socialists, if they want to align themselves with a terrorist organization, if they want to see our borders completely open and flooded with single military aged males at the same time they want to disarm us, I got to tell you, uh, that points to one thing for me, is that they are trying to fundamentally transformed the United States of America, which is what Barack Obama said back in 2008. Mm -hmm. Now, Colonel West, once again, thanks for being on the show. It, the problem. audience loved having you on last time, so it was great. I paid them. Um, so <laughs> as we look at the simple solution is we need to remove a bunch of people from America. <laughs> How feasible is it that the Trump administration can actually do that? Uh, I don't care about how feasible it is. You have a constitutional duty and responsibility to do it. So you freaking figure it out. You know, when I was a commander oh. and, and I issued out you know, orders and <laughs> yeah, guidance, yeah. <laughs> you, you freaking figure it out. I can't say the other word because, you know, this is a PG-13 right, right. show. But Wait, when I was a commander, you know, if I issued guidance, you know, if you were a subordinate officer and said, I can't do that, then you were not going to be a subordinate officer in my unit very long. I don't want to hear what you can't do. I want to hear what you can't accomplish. And I think that's one of the things that Donald Trump should be talking about is how you're going to reverse course with what we see happening. We're not just going to surrender to the United States of America that are people that, you know, people that are here illegally. So first and foremost, you start with all of these single military aged males. You start with all these criminals. You reverse this uh, aberration of law and order and you put criminals behind bars and you don't you know, continue to allow this cashless bail and all of these other type of things. And you hold district attorneys, you hold the judges accountable for what they're doing. Uh, there are citizens out there. Look, everybody that's listened to this show, you can file civil suit 
if you have standing and some judge, some district attorney has released some violent criminal back out into the streets, like we just recently saw with the police officer shot in uh, New York City, you have standing to bring a civil lawsuit against that district attorney and against that uh, that judge that did so. So I think that we need to start looking at these solutions that we have within our rule of law. And we need to start looking at leadership that's going to come in there and say, this is how we're going to get it done and, and make it very clear that you're not going to get to stay in the United States of America. Start with the taxpayer funded benefits. Say it right now. We're not going to give you debit cards. We're not going to give you free health care. And, and California, if that's what you say you want to do with your state benefits, well, we're not going to give you federal you know, monies that go toward that end state. And, and, you know, I challenge any judge to stand up here and say that uh, a a legal law-abiding citizen has the responsibility to give free benefits to someone that is here illegally. So, no, that's where we have to start making a stand. You know, I think about, I was listening to what you said about Chicago and um, talking about the kids. When, When we grew up, we remember prayer in the schools. We remember uh, um, saying the national anthem and um, baseball, hot dog, apple pie, t- Chevrolet type stuff. So mm-hmm. and patriotism. So that's what molded us. The what we're seeing right now with everything that we've been talking about today, the kids are seeing this now. How how do? Because I mean, I don't think they've ever done anything like this before but how do you uh ring that in for the kids and what they have kids in america for what they have seen when like the trans and uh yeah. trans into the schools and the churches having story time in the churches now yeah how do you swing that around for that i mean, for the for the younger for the youngest generation mm-hmm. is out there confused like i don't What's what's really going on? Well, I've always said the most important elected position in the United States of America school board. Uh, and I think that we are finally coming to that realization uh, because we've got to get back control of our school boards and so that they are educating our kids and not indoctrinating our kids. The other thing we have to start doing is these colleges of education on these respective college campuses. They are raising the next generation of little Marxist progressive socialist teachers that go out into our schools. And that's exactly what they do. And so somehow we've got to start looking at how we can start having conservative schools of education that certify teachers and they teach kids, not not indoctrinate kids. So I think those are two very important things Then parents got to step up. Uh, we have seen that happen and parents can't lose faith and can't lose hope, but parents got to make sure that, as it says in Proverbs 22, six, you train up a child in the way they should go so that when they grow old, they shall not depart from it. You don't see the authority of your child over to another teacher, to a professor, to a school district or what have you. Uh, you've got to make sure. And that's why I think it's so important that we, uh, support educational freedom that parents have the ability to decide what is the best uh, means or sources of education for their children. But without a doubt, we have to have a a revolutionary uh, stance in making sure that the progressive socialist left are not out there indoctrinating the minds of the future generations, which is what Adolf Hitler, Chairman Mao, Lenin, Stalin, uh, what's his name? Uh, Chavez and and Castro, what every single Marxist dictator has always talked about, controlling the minds of the future, and that's controlling the minds of the children. We have to wrest that control away from them. I wonder, uh, I've noticed something lately, uh, and I guess it started with uh, Johnson's uh, new Great Society, Mm -hmm. uh, when they started, when the government started providing assistance to all kinds of different groups of people. And I think the churches at that point uh, were doing it before the yeah. government was. And, and I just wonder if that deterioration happened because, hey, look, we still have the same amount of tithes, but we don't have to pay that pay that anymore. Let's support these people. Uh, it's a it's a crazy thought, but I'm, th- I'm watching the deterioration of the church. I've got yeah. a, a family up the street that moved here from Connecticut. And I didn't really think anything about it. A, a man, a woman, and a, I think they have twins. Uh, until I went by their house, and it started out with the homosexual flag. And then the next thing was a Black Lives Matter flag. And then most recently, it was the Palestinian flag mm-hmm. and the Israeli genocide or something like that on it. And I'm thinking, 
Now I got to research these people. So I'm looking at the, I'm, I'm finding out information. They both went and were very uh, highly acclaimed at Trinity College in Connecticut, which I don't know anything about other than the word Trinity. Sounds like it would be yeah. Christian in nature. Uh, but have you seen that where, where our churches seem to be? Wayne talked about it, about story time. It seems like they're on the wrong side of things these days. You've got pastors that are more so concerned about a 501c3 status, which God is not going to ask them about when they show up on judgment <laughs> uh, than they are about preaching the word of God and uh, and making a stance. And so secular humanism and Marxism has crept into our churches. When you see churches that are doing things that are antithetical to the scriptures uh, and these pastors trying to justify it, that's very disconcerting. And look, Christians, we're called to love everyone, but we're not called to love the darkness. And, right. and we're supposed to be, you know, praying these people out of darkness into the marvelous light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But what too many of these uh, pastors want to do is to conform to the world, which in Romans 12 and 2, it says that we as the body of Christ are not supposed to conform to the world, but we're supposed to be transformed and transform it through the renewing of our minds. Exactly. But instead, what we see are, are pastors want to tiptoe around and, you know, hey, brother, you know, I can't really say this, can't really do yep. that, blah, blah, yep. blah. And yep. the next thing you know, they're just appeasing and accommodating and acquiescing and compromising. And, and I think it's sad. So I will tell you, if you are at a church where your pastor on Easter Sunday did not say anything about Joe Biden's declaration of transgender visibility day, leave that church. Because obviously you have a pastor that does not have any stones. And I think you three guys know what I mean when I'm talking about yeah, stones. I got you. I got you. And, and if you are there, you're not going to grow. All you're going to do is be fed a, a line of bovine excrement that emulates from the secular humanist world. And that's not going to save your soul. You're going to feel good, you know, right. and, and you're going to get great. a happy to glass, uh, you know, sermon, but you're yeah. not going to hear the real word of God. Right. You know, one thing we've been really critical of on the show is how the Republicans have managed their house majority. Mm. And now that majority has continued to shrink and shrink and shrink to now it's just going to be one vote. Yeah. And I think the first implication we'll see is they're going to pass that Ukraine funding bill that everybody's been fighting against. But I think my biggest concern is what this is going to mean for the election, because I'm not even convinced that we're going to have the House majority by the time we get to the election. And I, we've opined about how it's going to open up some constitutional ways for Democrats to try to steal a Trump victory mm -hmm. or use a 14th Amendment. Nobody is a greater constitutional scholar on our show than you. Can yeah. you kind of talk to our audience about kind of what this is setting up as a Democrat state control of the House of Representatives before the election? Well, well, sure. If you listen to when the Supreme Court made the uh, the ruling that a state could not use the 14th Amendment, Section 3, you quote unquote, insurrection clause to, you know, deny a, a federal candidate from being on their ballot. That's something that has to be done at the federal government level. Uh, what Jamie Raskin uh, said there in the uh, United States House of Representatives that, you know, we're, we're just going to try to introduce this here in the United States uh, Congress and get it passed here. And then we'll get it over to the Senate and get it passed. And we at the federal government level will keep him off. You know, President Trump has never been, you know, charged, accused uh, or anything of insurrection. Matter of fact, most of the January 6th people have not been charged with insurrection. That's a very tough thing to, to, to kind of decide. If anything, Antifa should be charged with insurrection. Mm -hmm. So I am really concerned about the fact that, you know, we give Republicans a majority. But what they fail to understand is that. Democrats, when they're in the minority, they're still, you know, tenacious. When they're in the majority, they're tyrannical. And mm -hmm. for whatever reason, Republicans feel that they have to kind of compromise, go along, get along. Well, we just can't do this. We got to do that. No, you need to make a very clear, bold stance. As a matter of fact, Ronald Reagan said, stop painting in pretty pastels and painting bold colors. You know, and pr provide a clear delineation and separation between who you are. Do what is right by the Constitution and put the other side on the defense. And we failed to do that. And I don't want to see the American people all of a sudden say, why should we give Republicans a majority in either of the legislative bodies? Because they'll just cower anyhow. 
So I just think that Republicans up there in the House and the Senate need to find their big boy and big girl pants and start acting like, uh, you know, Americans and, and legislators that stand up against the tyranny of the progressive socialist left. Because, yeah, they're going to look at every means they possibly can to undermine this president. And it would not surprise me if somehow with a very slim majority, they try to get in a, a bill that looks at accusing President Trump of violating Section 3 of the 14th Amendment before this November election. And if that happens, if that happens and they pass it and it goes to the Senate, uh, I don't know if they get, I mean, because, you know, they still got that nuclear option thing. Well, they, they will still have to have the 60 votes for closure. But again, you know, are there enough uh, Republicans that will stand firm and not, you know, not cross over the aisle? <laughs> because this, you know, anti-Trump sentiment is still very strong out there. Look, Americans, listen to me and listen to me. You got to stop worrying about personalities. You got to start worrying about principles. You got to start worrying about policies. You have to start worrying about vision. And when you look at the progressive socialist left who controls the Democrat Party, I don't care if it's Joe Biden, Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, Pritzker, uh, whoever, they are dead set on a certain ideological agenda. That is what you have to start looking for. And anyone that is supporting the Democrat Party, this Democrat Party right now, you're supporting the demise and the undermining uh, of the sovereignty of the constitutional republic that we call the United States of America. You, you're advocating and you're supporting its destruction. That's it. Full stop. Uh, and, and that's how I, I, you know, if someone comes up and says, I'm a Democrat, I say, well, look, you know, you are in violation of the constitution. If you support this party, that's just how it is. I like that. I like that. And dude, I love you. And I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, the, 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 the common, the common sense that just rose up, <laughs> the common sense that just rose over his tongue, man. I mean, honestly, and, and I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad that you're with us because that's what I miss from the time that I got in, in 2007, 2008. And, but that's what I, what you're bringing is what sustains what people have today. It doesn't sustain, like, you know, you were just talking just a while ago about the inspiration part, um, churches, the church, um, uh, uh, because my dad was a pastor and they used to talk about the word of God, how that keeps you and carries you. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, in churches right now, they don't really preach the word of God. It's a more inspirational thing. So you, again, you feel good while you're in there, but when you walk out, you're, uh, it, yeah. it's yeah. gone. It's almost like a CPAC um, um, convention. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, yeah. y'all, Y'all tuned up and fired up while you're there. And, uh, and then on the plane ride home, you lose everything that you had. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to get back to understanding task and purpose. The American people need to understand the, the, the tasks that they can do and the purpose for, for which they need to do these tasks. Because as uh, Hutch talked about, I mean, these are very serious issues that we're, we're facing. I mean, when you have people in our country that are saying death to our country. When you have yeah. people, a government that is abdicating its constitutional duties and roles and responsibilities, I mean, these are very serious issues that we're facing. This is a constitutional crisis that we're in. And it's going to come down to, you know, honest, everyday American citizens that are constitutional conservatives, classical liberals, not this postmodern liberalism, that understand individual rights, freedoms, and liberties that make a stand. And as Frederick Douglass said, the three boxes, it's the ballot box, the jury box. And unfortunately, if it has to come to a cartridge box, I don't want that. But you can only push people so far. And, and I think that's what the left is trying to do is to push us into this. So we have to be very savvy, very careful. But we cannot abdicate you know, our country to these uh, very demonic, very deranged, very delusional Marxists. I, I want Hush, no, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. I'm getting ready to let him go. Okay. Okay. Get him next uh, time. We'll yeah. get him next time. Colonel, thank you so much for taking the time out. As you, always a pleasure. Your schedule. Uh, we uh, look forward to to having you back again uh, in a few weeks. I just sent a message to Gwendolyn, and everything is straight. So uh, okay. again, um, thank you so much, and uh, let thank people you know how. You know. Psh, 
It's <clears throat> it's like a trophy. It's like another trophy from the one that we have right now. Um, let people got, know how they can. I, I got to I got to tell one quick story. Yeah, real real fast, sir. Uh, it was the night that you were giving us giving Wayne the award for the podcast, mm -hmm. and we were at a the the. I forget the name of the group, the bloggers or bloggers, yeah, association. bloggers association. Yeah. So they, they had this nighttime event and they, <laughs> they passed out two drink tickets to everybody come in. All these young kids are in there, all these Republicans yeah. and yeah. young Republicans can't drink. No. Right. So they're all in there and they're making all kind of noise. Oh, they know it. Colonel West went from being a battalion commander to being a Sergeant major <laughs> and got up on that stage and said, Eddie's. <laughs> I just never forget that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He did. That he got beautiful. up there, and if 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 everybody's head wasn't turned to the stage, they turned. Wait, what did he what say? Was what, 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 what was that? What was that? He was like, "Calm down, Chef <laughs> Patrick. Calm down." They, they got a program. They tried to get this, to, and then he gave the thing and just walked, just cool, cool, right off the stage. But yeah, um. Let let our crowd uh, let our sure. audience know how they can follow you, how yeah. they can um, find you, and uh, how they can support you, and um, give them some last thoughts. Sure, uh, the acru.org, the American Constitutional Rights Union. Next week, uh, the 18th, I believe, we'll be down in Alpharetta, Georgia, with a conference program there. If you're down in the Atlanta metropolitan area, please go to our website, and you can learn more about that. Uh, you can follow me at the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast and, of course, on Substack and all the social media platforms except for TikTok because we don't do the Chinese Communist Party. And uh, I look forward to seeing people out there and about. And if you're up in the Virginia area, Lynchburg, Virginia, I'll be flying out tomorrow to speak at a constitutional and virtue conference and liberty conference there at Liberty University on okay. uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Man. Man, they man, they in for a treat. Uh, that's all I got to say. They in for a treat. All right, Colonel. Um, yes, thank you so much. And yes, I, um, again, sorry about. No, no, no. We're all good. Okay. All right. So, all right. I, cause yeah, we got to we got to have you back. So you know, I I, I got to apologize because no. you know. But no. Um, God bless and talk to you in a little bit. All thank right. You. God be with you guys. Take care, Hutch. J. Rob. All right. I uh, was sort of raised uh, in the Puerto Rican community. And I had a very close relationship with the Greek American community, for real. I am Joe Bidenopoulos. I grew up in a heavily Irish Catholic community in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and a heavily Italian Polish community. When I say I got, uh, uh, I, I, I got raised in the black church, he knows I'm not kidding. The Persian culture is amazing. As a student of the Persian culture, I probably. Uh, went to shul more than many of you. I come out of the black community. The background of my family is Irish-American, not fundamentally unlike the Palestinian people. I, uh, you might say, raised in uh, the uh, synagogues of my state. Everybody in town was either Polish or Italian. I grew up feeling self-conscious. My name didn't end in an SKI. I was raised in a neighborhood where I felt self-conscious my name didn't end in O. That's kind of how I was raised, like so many Americans of, uh, of Irish heritage. In HBCU, in your home state, Mr. President. Let me tell you, forget about it. That's where I, that, that's where I got raised, man. Just like rabbis, synagogues, and Jewish community centers in your hometowns, and that's the tradition I got raised. Hard-working people, the middle class, the neighborhoods I got raised in. I was raised uh, on GM. I was raised by Danny Noe. I was raised by a righteous Christian. I got raised on automobiles. <laughs> <laughs> what a national joke. You want to talk about clones? You just seen about 30 of them. Just right, right there. <laughs> Bidenopolis. I was going to say Joe Biden is the living embodiment of how corrupt our political system has gotten. Yeah. Here's a man who never accomplished anything of substance in life, never ran a business, never hired an employee, never did anything. He got into politics. He lies. He, you know, he cheats, he steals, you know, whatever. And the media is totally running interference for him so that people like average normal people don't 
know that. And he just goes in front of any group and says whatever he thinks they want to hear, whether it's true or not. And and now and then he's just selling out the country and ruining America. It's oh, he just frustrates me. The thing that's the worst thing to me is you think about it, you look at that old guy. We don't have a commander in chief right now. No, we don't. No. no, we don't. No, we don't. Um, it's almost like a um idiot by committee um thing that's going on right and the now. And the general the generals are going stupid. Did you see that letter that yeah, came I out? Saw it. I saw it. I it was wasn't very many, it wasn't very many of them, but that's too many. Yeah, yep. that's yeah, yeah, yeah. They need um, to be defrauded. Go, go ahead and break that down. Well, there was uh I think it was twenty or so retired generals and admirals and some senior level uh, civil servant defense department people that came out and they're going to, they're filing a brief at the Supreme court to get the Supreme court to not rule that he has full immunity. Uh, Now this is the first president in the history of the United States of America that's ever been charged like this. Yep. All right. And, And these generals that are supposed to support the constitution, that's their number one function is to support the Constitution, and they are in violation of that. And uh, Hold on, hold on. Whether they are active or inactive. You're never, when you're an officer like that, you're never retired. Never retired. The only way that you can get out is resigning your commission, and that's what all of them ought to do. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you, I mean, it's not, you know, uh, um, uh, when, when I think of, when I think of, the, the military, when I think of the Air Force, when I think of the Army and stuff like that, and I look to see what's going on uh, and how bad we're treated and how bad the, the service is treated first, how bad the service is treated, because that's part of us. The service is part of us. I, I, ever, I mean, I was only in there for eight years. Hutch was in there twice that and plus more. It, it's like the service... To this country is 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 added to your DNA. So when you see things that happen to the service, it affects you here. Okay, it's almost like somebody is um, um, trying to stick something in in you or trying to change who you are. What and you're watching this and you're like, that can't happen. That's not and. I don't know about you, Hutch, but I'm like, somebody's got to do something. You no, know, I'm, I got, I'm 100% with you. And and, and no. anybody, and, and this is not to disparage anybody who's not a veteran. It's not for everybody. No, 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 right, right. But for everybody out there that is a veteran, they're feeling the exact same way you are. Right. Because I know that I, I'm just glad that the years in my life before Mark Milley, I was, I was thinking that, oh, you know what? Our officer corps is the finest thing in the world. They're never going to let Bill Clinton do this. They're never going to let Barack Obama do this. They're going to step in and they're going to enforce the Constitution. And Mark Milley blew that up. He blew it up. And it's unbelievable to me that our officer corps is so horrible. Yeah. Because I'm part of it. So is Alan West. I used to think about I used to think about that, um, Jay. I was like, you know, um, when I was in, dude. We were the best. Yep. I mean, I, the military was, I mean, I don't care who came up or thought that they could come up against the United States. But we were the best. And that was before uh, 9-11 and all that. We, right, we didn't take second to nobody. And you know right. what the first thing they did in our demise? They made a thing called General Order Number 1. One of the things about the military, one of the most important things about the military is camaraderie. Yeah. And that's why all this DEI stuff is so so tragic. Because that's not the way it was when we were when we were in, we we solved more problems after work at the bar than we did at work. You yeah. know what? And I'm glad you said that. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> no, no, right. I'm glad I'm glad you said that because when I was at Hickam, now you have your certain branches of service, Air Force, Army. My Navy Marines. So when Hutch talked about camaraderie, it's like, yeah, you know, you stick with your service though. You you stick with yeah. the army and we the army and stuff. So, but when you go to the club, you see army, you see military, you see we're all in there together. 
it, it, it's a, it's a, it's that brotherhood sisterhood thing, and it's for real. It's not fake. It's for, well, it used to be. It's for real. Now they don't even have. They used to have the enlisted man's club, the NCO club, the officer club. They don't even have that anymore. They just have one, a community club. What? Yeah. My son just told me he just got back from what? Fort Knox. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we used to go to the officer's club on the flight line when we didn't want to eat in the chow hall, in the in the enlisted side. I mean, mm-hmm. um, in the unenlisted side, we used to go to the chow hall, I know, um, to the enlisted where the officers were and act like we were doing something on the flight line to, to stand in line to get the best chicken, to, to get the best food at the officer's club. You know, it's like, you know, you stand in line with a train, you're like, we're going to get in trouble? No. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like, I was in Honduras. I was in Honduras and we were out in the woods, boy. And we were eating three C rations a day, three yeah. MREs a day. That's hard to do. Yeah, it right? is. Yeah. That locks you up and everything. But yeah, anyway, yeah. so we took, we got to go to Tegucigalpa, right? Okay. And it's some city there. And the Air Force has a presence there. And the Air Force built a town. Yeah, they we like, that. they built a t- with wood. Remember the old Western shows with, oh, the, wooden, yeah. with the wooden sidewalks? Yeah, they yeah. built one of them. <laughs> and we we went there. It's like, whoa! These dudes are living like five in a suite, without with a with a balcony. And I'm like, hey, Sarge, look, there's a mess hall. Yeah. Let's go eat. <laughs> we went in there. They had the thing with the ice cream in it and the cakes and everything. I'm like, yeah, the Air Force knows how to live, boy. Yeah. When I was at Tonopah Test Range, uh, because I let God bless me. God bless me. In my military career, my first four years were in Hawaii. My next two and a half years was in Las Vegas. <laughs> so, I mean, I had a chief master sergeant coming up to me and like that they had, they had never been to Hawaii. They had never been to Las Vegas. And those were my two first stations. But I was at Tony Park Test Range. So we would fly up on Monday turn of our test range, fly around Area 51. We would never go over it. We would fly around it. Get to turn of our test range. First time I ever seen this before, I just thought it was in the movies. You put your hand on the on this thing, and it looked like an alien thing to, to, to scan your hand and stuff, and then it lets you in. Okay, once you get in, it's that city that Hutch is talking about, Okay. It it just happened to be the uh, first thing in the morning. We went to the mess hall. They had chefs, not cooking <laughs> chefs. Yep. I'm like, really? And 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 um, Wayne, go ahead, go, go ahead and get. I said, um, I don't know. Go ahead. Uh, I'll take an everything omelet. Now the everything omelet, uh, down at the <laughs> down on the base. Everything was like this. Uh, everything only at Tonopah test range was like this. <laughs> I couldn't eat all of it. I was, <laughs> I was like, everything is in this thing. And then at lunchtime, when you walked in there, you ever been to those truck stops that had those pies and stuff on it? Oh, mm-hmm. Jay, it was like a, 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 a cocktail cup <laughs> with shrimp. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All the way around the thing right here, and the marinating sauces. I was like, "Y'all have got to be, kidding. y'all got to be kidding." This is what, and we had steak every Wednesday night, and then um, every other Wednesday was steak and crab legs or steak and lobster. So they only asked you to do one thing: don't get fat, don't get fat, because the gym was right next door. So you know, I mean, and. Like I said, there's ice cream for days. You, I mean, ice cream machine. You, yeah. they didn't do it. You went over there and did it yourself. And they all of the different fresh uh, uh, fruits and 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 sprinkles and stuff. God, I miss it. I'm 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 <laughs> developing tears right now because I miss. Good Lord. Hutch is right. Hutch is That's right. probably why they had to lower all the physical requirements for the trannies and for all that. They're sitting there eating all the time. And 
We did have people in Iraq that gained weight, that gained a lot of weight. Oh, really? They sit there and get the cookies every night and everything. It's like, you can't do that, man. You know what? My, my mom, I, man, I love her to death. Did you go overseas too? Me? You went overseas, didn't you? Several times. Okay. You're not supposed to. <laughs> your, your parents or your family or whatnot, it's okay for them to send love packages. Okay. But you can't send pork in those packages. <laughs> I don't know how she did it. <laughs> Maybe it was a prayer. <laughs> I don't know. We got a ham, right? We got, we got a ham. <laughs> she, she said a canned ham over <laughs> in my packet. Over in the not been hers like everybody was like, <laughs> get the carver knife, let's go. <laughs> get the because we couldn't have ham. And and uh they they just opened up a pizza hut over in uh Saudi Arabia. It was that's the other thing that that's the other thing they do, JR. Pizza Hut and Burger King follow us. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. It's it's nuts. People are getting blown up in convoys for them to deliver cheese to Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have pepperoni, but you could put beef on there. Okay. You, or, or like, oh no, no. You couldn't have sausage. You could have um, beef pepperoni or beef, and you know. But there was a military. I, there was an officer's wife. And most officers had Asian wives. I don't know why that was. <laughs> but uh, she was Thai. And she would cook Thai dishes out of her out of her oh, kitchen. Wow. And J- Jay, let me tell you something. I don't know what that noodle, those noodles were or whatnot, but it was the best tasting dish that I mean, oh my goodness. I mean, yeah, and plus, you know, you you switch out the money, so you're giving them Iraq, like I mean, um, Saudi Arabian money for the rut cut. God, I miss it. I miss oh my god, I miss it. I miss it. You know who really eats good? Is that the Navy the Navy? Really? I'll tell you what, when I got when I came back from Korea, uh I had already ets I was joined in the reserves, but they made me go to Oakland Army Base to D-Rose, return from overseas. And so I go over there, and they didn't have, it was Oakland Army Base, and they didn't have a, a dining facility. So we had to go to Treasure Island Naval Base to eat three times a day on a bus. So we go up there. It's my first time up there, and I'm in the breakfast line. And the Army, man, you get one scoop. That's it. And you, you move on down the line. So I got my tray out and I'm looking at this menu and stuff. They got like English muffins, stuff I haven't eaten in years. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, give me one of them English muffins and I'll scrambled eggs. And, and I moved too fast because the lady was putting a second spoon of scrambled eggs. On my tray. <laughs> You're like second scoop. I was like, what? <laughs> I I said, I to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> But then yeah. they had the prisoners. They had one area of the mess hall taped off with that police tape. Yeah. And all these guys with peas on their back got marched in. <laughs> yeah. The military. I mean. Oh, it used to be uh, great. I have to throw it back to Colonel West there for a second because, I mean, honestly, and I appreciate him taking the time out to join us, but I think he's a national treasure. I, I do. do too. And, you know, I'm not trying to pump pump up his head or anything like that but when we're all here for a purpose jay hutch myself we're here for a purpose um and when that purpose is over i believe um uh, you aren't here on this earth anymore that you know that's just me but i do believe that some people waste uh waste certain people that have purpose and the Republican party wasted their chance years ago with Alan West, because Alan West, honestly, I could have seen him as a vice presidential candidate. Uh, easy. Uh, could have seen him as, as a division commander too. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, you can see, 
I mean, honestly, you probably could have seen him in the Pentagon, uh, you know, taking over, running stuff. You think everybody knows his story? I'll bet not. I don't think so. No, he was in he was in Iraq before I got there. He was a battalion commander of an artillery battalion, self propelled artillery battalion, and there was he got some intelligence that his one of his patrols was going to get ambushed. So somebody told him this police chief knows all about it. So he goes outside. His 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 men are with him, and he goes outside and gets this police chief, and he orders all his men to leave. Orders all his men to go back in the barracks, get out of here. And he takes his pistol out, and he fires it right over this Iraqi police chief's ear. And he told him everything. So he saved lives. And then he went and reported to his brigade commander, who relieved him. Wow. That's his story. He got stopped short as a lieutenant colonel when he could have easily been a general. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite part of Colonel West, too, is just how simple he makes things. It's like the Constitution yeah. says this, that's what we do. You know, yeah. like when I asked about yeah. that, how easy is it to deport? Doesn't matter. Constitution says they shouldn't be here. Exactly. That, here. that answer was good, man. Yeah. Because well, because we, have to start, we have to start transmitting that. Yeah, because right. we're going to need our people's heart to be in this for it to happen. Yeah. Right. Or even when he was talking about the January 6th stuff and the insurrection, you know, it, it's it's like at the end of the day, Donald Trump has not been charged with insurrection. Move on, folks. Plain and simple. Yeah. And, and I Plain mean, and the simple. left goes down all these rabbit holes and this yep. study or this yep. thing, or you could yep. interpret it this way. And, and you know what we like, do? We, we blow it every time and we argue with them on their terms. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and that's, and that's, that's why that's why it's almost like he gives me calmness because he it's it's almost strength through his peace you know what i'm saying because he doesn't i mean honestly he really doesn't have i mean i've never seen him angry but i don't hang around him like that but he's calm cool collected and knows exactly what should be done just like you said, uh, and I think that disease, that the virus that I was talking about earlier, has a whole lot to do with the sensitivity, uh, um, the sensitive, uh, the tissue paper feelings virus that has flowed from all over this country like a blanket. It's like um, we used to say, okay, well, what does the Constitution say about this? That's Congress. You say, Congress. You, what does the Constitution say about? Well, and most uh, politicians used to be able to quote the Constitution because they knew the Constitution. Today's um, uh, politicians, they don't know the Constitution. They just put their hand on the thing and lie and say that they're going to follow the Constitution. And then the next thing you know, they're writing bad checks and having orgies and stuff like that. But when you get with the... Um, but then when you get rid of Alan West type of stuff, you're like, he, he's calm. He knows the Constitution. He can quote it like this. And it, it, it's like, dude, have, look, sit down, have a beer. Let's talk. You know I what I'm saying? That, that interview that we did that won the award, um, I remember I, I had done my, I don't remember the exact details, but mm-hmm. I had done my homework because I knew Alan West was going to be there. And so mm-hmm. I, I, said, I mentioned something about, uh, I don't know, about Saudi Arabia or Yemen or, or mm-hmm. Turkey or something like that. And my man came back with five more countries. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. Do y'all understand why we won this? <laughs> Do you understand? I mean, and, and honestly, he was giving interviews with other people too. It's just that ours was so good. Um, going back and forth and and it's probably because we I use military talking to military, but um, you know that was our heyday, baby. That that you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Sammy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Sammy. Somebody asked me they were like, uh, because you know I've been calling this the award winning wing the pre show. I'm like, what awards have you won? Well, well I mean we. Won best in podcast in 2014, and then the next year was 
CPAC blogger of the year. And honestly, I really don't talk about these things. I, you know, I really don't talk about winning blogger, winning blogger of the freaking year. CPAC blogger. We had a radio the new, network, the news ninja, the news ninja, Wayne Dupree. Assassinating liberal lives with documented facts. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Great tagline. Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> and, um, thank you for listening to Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> yeah, that's still that's still out there. But um, I have to say, I have to say, uh, uh, each of us has certain things that we do on the regular. Actually, I think the show is like on the side. But um, we have regular things that we do. Um, and I don't want you, the audience, to think that we're complaining or we are um, uh, begging because that's something that we don't do. We don't beg any of you for anything. Just don't do it. Or at least I don't believe in doing it. But sometimes you need help. Sometimes you need help and, you know, you, you can pray, you can fast about it and stuff like that. But sometimes you need to reach out to the community and ask for help. Um, J, uh, Jay has a website. I have a website. Hutch has uh, a website. Hutch has a podcast. Uh, actually, Jay has two websites. And then um, we also have the show here. It's like we really need people to share what we are doing. Okay. Um, as I said, as I started off the show or as I could have started off the, sh off the show, I'll go back to say, we could be Democrats, this Democrat, 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 and Democrat and, and, and damn the Democrats and, and slam them and, and get rid of them. And then, da -da -da. yeah, that's what everybody else does. Um, and it's tiring. It does. I mean, come on y'all. Really? I was thinking about yesterday when I went outside and I was uh, soaking up the sun. I wasn't really looking at it, but as I was soaking up the sun, I was like, I wonder how many people get outside on a regular basis just to experience what God has done in this world. And I'm talking about uh, nature. Uh, um, the green grass, the blue air, I mean, um, the blue sky, the clouds, you know what I'm saying? You want to hear something crazy? Mm -hmm. That's what my neighbor and I were talking about yesterday during the eclipse. See, what was how magnificent God's work was exactly oh, yeah. on, on this earth. We were, yep. that was literally what we were talking about. Yeah. That's what we were. Th that's what we were thinking about yesterday. Me and my son were out there. It's like, how many people just, just, you know, I mean, Yes, politics is there. Politics. I mean, and and and, and well, actually, I you know, I, I don't even know if you can call it politics anymore. It's more like a shell. It's more like a circus. It's, it's not really politics. Up. It's to keep us keep us occupied. That's it. I mean, That's you all. know, the, the the worst thing in the world that could happen in this political world is we all get together and get along with each other. They hate That's that. The worst. Right. They absolutely well, hate that. Right. You know what I was thinking about yesterday when we were talking about that. I'm on my street. And this is probably the same for you two guys, especially uh, Wayne in an established community outside of Baltimore. I'm not don't don't have that much knowledge about Minnesota, but I'm out there and I'm going. This street's been here for two, three hundred years. Yeah, I'm just visiting. You right. know, it's like this has been here. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. And, and another th another thing that you can think about, um, my barber, Ida. This morning, um, it, uh, she was talking. Well, actually, uh, what's the thing? Elon Musk said that uh, AI is going to take over humanity next year. Uh, okay, but um, we were talking about lifespans, and she was talking. I we we're talking about how bad things are going. And she said, "Yeah, in the next twenty five." I said, "Yeah, I ain't gonna be here the next." Year. <laughs> she said, "Don't you see that?" Yes, you will. I said. Uh, you know, I'm 54. You're talking about the next 25 years. <laughs> she said, yes, you are going to be here. And in my mind, I was like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> if they you imagine what it's like? Take me. But, but 
to get I mean, but to go in the way that you were talking, it's like when I leave, everything's still gonna be here. But yeah. think about think about the kid that's 18, 19, 20 years old that freaking gets it. It's gotta suck to be him, man. Because that's what I thought by myself. Yeah, that's what I meant when I said about Mark Milley. Yeah. All the decades before that, I had faith in what we were doing. Yeah. As soon as he did that, my army flag came down off the front of my house. Well, yeah. and it's remarkable too how the country is just cascading down this path of just destruction. And and you'd mentioned, you know, the website. So Will's working on a substack this week where he's exploring that, where every civilization, every society, every empire. When you stop rewarding the most productive members of society, however that's structured, because those people are the ones that need to generate food and excess and come up with innovation. And as soon as you stop rewarding that, it, it, the whole thing breaks. And if you look at America, we've become less innovative. We've become less productive People go to school not to learn how to do stuff and figure things out, but to get their form so they can go to an employer and say, okay, now plug me in. Right. And and the next generation, you look at these poor kids. When I see them supporting student loan forgiveness, it's like you guys really want to see the entire economic system collapse. And going to school should be hard. You should have to work hard to do it. It should be something you excelled to and I figured out how to pay for it. And your lesson is as much in figuring it out as it is what you learned in school, but saying, here's your free school, go do it. Like you don't get anything out of it. You have nothing invested. You're not rewarding hard work at the end of the day. It's just, it's ridiculous. And that's, that's what the military did. You know, when I went to primary leadership development course, it was hard, right? but at the end I was, I was a graduate of that thing. And yep. at B-Knock and Warren Officer Candidate School and all the rest of them, you know, but uh, our work ethic has deteriorated a little bit here. Well, and then you figure our political corruptness, because this whole student loan thing, what a lot of people don't talk about, it isn't just who's paying to the government or should you, but you're making it where kids don't have to work hard yeah. to pay for it, to figure it out, to get the education. Mm -hmm. And then who's reaping the financial benefits? That's these the thing. huge schools the and these huge financial yeah. institutions. And they're transferring that those people keep that wealth. Those colleges and those lenders that are screwing people over keep the wealth. They give kickbacks to politicians through contributions or through hiring them. Why do you think Joe Biden got a million dollars a year to teach at the University of Pennsylvania? You know, and and then that gets transferred that debt to the American citizen. So so it's not just the kid. It's they're letting these big companies keep the money. And, and the colleges sit there and have have death to America rallies and everything else. Uh, and, free speech. Think think if you are the kid that is in Chicago or wherever, it doesn't matter where, you don't have any money and you're smart and you want to go to college, but you don't do it because you don't want that debt. You can't afford it. So you mm -hmm. don't do it. And now you have to pay for somebody else's college debt. Mm -hmm. Right. And you don't even get a degree. Well, and I look at the Democrats who always rail, oh, Republicans are for big business. Student loan forgiveness benefits big business in the hundreds of millions and billions of dollars because they keep the money. And until you're going to go after those institutions and say, give the money back, it, it's like the logic that these people implore to come up with these positions. It just doesn't make any sense. AM radio. Uh, Soros. AM radio um, has, for as long as I've been around, I mean, yeah, there's a whole lot of gospel, gospel radio stations and stuff like that on AM radio. And AM radio, Hutchie could probably speak more to it about the band and how far that it reaches and stuff. But for the most part, conservative radio has eaten up AM radio. You hear a whole lot more conservative talk on AM radio than you do um, liberal talk or progressive talk. At they least have the, At least the syndicated stuff. 
Right. You, that part has gone into FM uh, uh, to mix along with the music and, and the secular stuff like that. George Soros, before I even get back to the radio part, George Soros, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say it like that, um, for the past or for, for years has been set setting up this country by put, uh, having judges, lawyers, uh, schools, attorneys uh, general, community, uh, of state. councils. He's been funding uh, so many things in this country. I guess you know to 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 further along the anti-American type of uh, progressive communist agenda. Now he's doing it with the radio stations. He's buying up Latino radios. You know how we joke about it. Cinco, cinco, cinco. Okay, he's buying up. Latino radio stations across the country, and he is and he is putting in the socialist progressive talk in there. We remember Radio America, Radio Free America, whatnot. That didn't last long, but he wasn't in charge of that though. That didn't last long, and then they started going to social media. They did because it's, it's all fake. You can't make a profit with that junk product. Yeah. But with him, y'all see, I, I saw that. I saw it. With him, y'all saw what he's doing now. now. Now he's getting in there. And basically what he's done, he has almost by himself uh, turned America uh, into his little playground. Almost. Who's in charge of Fox News? The Murdochs. Okay. Get Murdoch family. Murdoch is a baby to what Soros is, because Murdoch only sticks with the with the uh, the news, which in a way is a little bit different too. Because you know you in charge of the news, then you control what people read and see and stuff like that too. Uh, but what but what um, Soros is doing? When I saw what he's doing with with the with the radio, is that Salem Network? No. Mm -mm. It's the other one. What's the other one called? Doesn't matter. Uh, something, like 300, I know. something like 300 stations or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I I will say I have to give credit to George Soros and the other communists. Yeah, because yeah. I was going to do that, but back, I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I mean, if For you real. go back and look at the Communist Manifesto, they right. have 40, 50, 60, 70 year plans. Right. And they talk about, about corrupting institutions at right. the ground level, changing people's perception, and then just watching it over the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years grow up through the thing. I was going to ask Colonel West about the judiciary because we're seeing more crazy decisions coming out of the judicial branch. And how did they do that? 30 years ago, they got the Marxists going to law school. And then they become lawyers. And now 30 years later, they're judges. And it's these people, you get Katenji Brown, who doesn't know what a woman is, and, and just just a, just a Marxist. And it, it, he's done it very brilliantly and very cost effectively. How cheap is it to buy all the AM radio stations versus? Yes. How it to, right. You know, yeah. and I mean, it's a big investment, but, you know, he buys local DAs off. And yep. those DAs eventually become state attorney generals yep. and, and they just yep. keep moving up the food chain. It, it's been, I mean, this has been going on for decades. Tell them about Keith Ellison. <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. Keith Ellison is the worst. He won't even lock up criminals. And, and I mean, he started out as just a nobody lawyer and then he keeps getting funded and keeps moving up. But for us as conservatives, you know, we, we never had those people at the grassroots especially once they kind of took out the church, like Hutch was talking about earlier, the church filled that gap. And now that that's gone or largely me, gone. This is, this is from last year. Um, what, and uh, uh, the story that I saw, I, I just saw it this week, but when I was looking up videos and stuff, 
This is from last year. Liberal takeover of conservative voices. A group linked to billionaire George Soros is making a $60 million deal to buy 18 Hispanic radio stations across the U.S., one of which is the iconic radio Mambi. But our next guest is refusing to be bought. Conservative radio star Lourdes Ubiete, Vieta, I'm sorry, has quit Radio Mambi and has moved full time to the new Americano Media. She joins us now from Miami. Lourdes, welcome to the show. Just really quickly, very briefly, explain to our audience why Mambi is so important in the Hispanic um, community. Well, a Mambi is an iconic um, signal for a uh, Cuban exile community and uh, is the biggest fighter um, against uh, communism in, uh, in South Florida. Mambi um, uh, represents the, the pain of the, the Cuban community, Venezuelan community, Nicaraguan community, and we are the voice, you know, of these uh, victims of uh, communism here in South Florida. And so this is a massive deal. We know that George Soros is, is help, helping to fund this. Why would George Soros want a, you know, a Hispanic or Spanish language radio stations? What's in it for him? And, and the others, there's Obama staffers as well that are involved in this, former staffers. Well. Sure. Yes. Well, um, what I believe is this, uh, this is about control and about politics. And this is, uh, um, um, you know, they are trying to silence the conservative voices, especially in, in Spanish, you know. And uh, the way to do it um, in their minds is to buy these uh, 18 radio stations, and uh, especially Radio Mambi, because the rest of the station nobody's talking about, you know. Uh, they are only talking about Mambi because it's, this is where the conservative, um, uh, you know, uh, talk is happening. You, ref you refuse to... You know, they wanted to buy your silence. You refused. Um, have other people that you work with um, at? You know, I have a, I have a quick question before before we start to wind down. Um, why, why haven't, why doesn't our side do stuff like this? Because we got people at the top of our side that aren't on our side. I mean, and I know it's a, I know it's an answer that that we can give just like you said, but it's like, it's like you look at it. These people are putting millions and millions and millions into um, the uh, community or, or radio or, or, or uh, churches or, or, or this and that. <clears throat> and our side just makes, <laughs> let, me, let me, let me just, let me just run this real quick. There's a big difference between the left and the right. And I'm not talking about politicians here. I'm talking about people. Right. Right. The, well, no, I am talking about politicians. The left, politics is their life. The right, life is their life and politics is their hobby. We don't take it as serious as they do, especially on the citizen side. You know, you, but but even the politicians, you go up and you talk uh, to a Republican, and 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 you looks at you listen to their answers, yeah. And it's like, no, we can't deport anybody. That that would we couldn't do that. You know, we would no. There's a, it, it's ridiculous. You know that like what J. Rob said about the the communist plan. You know who else has a plan like that? The jihadists. Yep. If you look at the Holy Land Foundation trial, you could see they had a plan on paper. And they've got about three quarters of the things knocked off already, you know. So, well, and I think, get serious. I I think it it comes down to fundamentally the rights mentality and the left's mentality. So the rights mentality is about personal responsibility, taking care of my tribe, my small tribe of my family, my larger tribe of my community or my church or or that sort of thing, and. I think on the left, they're about a lack of personal responsibility and institutions just making life easy for them. And so for us, we don't think about this corruption that they do. And it, it's kind of like this wealth tax. Everybody talks about this wealth tax, right? Oh, it's a great deal. Billionaires should pay more, blah, 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 blah. All that's going to happen is as soon as the left gets that in, essentially a wealth tax means they tax you for having stuff. And if you're so thick-headed to think they're going to stop at the billionaires, I, I got a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. <laughs> they want to break through that wealth tax concept 
where they tax you for what you own because that's going to keep trickling down. Mm -hmm. And the right doesn't see that coming. And, and how many times have we done it? It's like when we, when we said, okay, yeah, gay marriage isn't bad. Now you got all the crazy stuff, you know? But the left is just like this seed that never stops. And they understand the power of institutional control because at the end of the day, a leftist wants to know big daddy government's going to take care of me. I'm not responsible. For, you know, I had everything on the left really boils down to a lack of personal responsibility. Yeah. I, I you know what? I, I've always said <laughs> that, well, I learned that when Democrats lose something, they don't pack their bags and walk away. They pitch a tent because they're getting ready to fight even harder, even if they got to cheat. That's just, I mean, that's just how it is. They, I mean, you know, I always go back to something that really changed me was that uh, the gay marriage vote in California. That, that changed me about how <laughs> they, they subverted an election and took it to the Supreme Court and Change, change the vote. Th that mentally, for what do you think you know about the world and politics, for that to happen, no wonder people, say, you know what, I ain't gonna vote no more. It doesn't matter. I mean, if they can, if they can do that, then they can do anything, you know. And and I think we're right now. I think we're living in the age of. They can do anything. And they are doing right. anything. I think and you're right. That's why I'm not that's why I'm not trusting in the court system. When you look at these freaking rulings that these right. people make, the constitution only matters if you follow it, man. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's why we talk about we need a big reset as a country. I mean, we do. Because Republicans, you know, if you think the left you keeps pushing, 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 and conservatives are the right kind of holds the line and it's like oh we want to do this one percent tax okay fine we'll do that okay well now it's two now it's ten now it's a hundred and mm -hmm. that's the left once they check off that next box okay we got this they immediately say what's the next one what's the next one and they never stop and conservatives for too long my entire lifetime has been how do we not give up ground and that's why you know, like when we look at the deportions, I want President Trump to show up day one and say, everybody's going home. Oh, here we're playing the music. So that's my final thought. President no, no, Trump, no, no, no. <laughs> get in there and day one, I want anybody who's not supposed to be in America out of America. I understand the chaos. I understand the pictures. I understand crying people as families or whatever. They aren't supposed to be here. Get them out. You know, we're getting ready. To, uh, we're getting ready to roll out of here. You've been watching the Wayne Dupree podcast. We're here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 12 to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you have questions that you want to give to us or you can always email me at wayne at waynedupree.com. Um, and also, uh, you know, if you want to call, you can 1-800-895-5725. Uh, we are here. And uh, we hope that you have been enlightened. We hope that you have learned something. And, uh, you know, and if you're mad with us, come back tomorrow. You'll be happy with us. You know, I mean, it's a it's a family thing going on here. It's a hug for everybody. I'm going to give uh, final thoughts. Oh, well, uh, Jay's going to give us final thoughts. Hutch is going to give us final thoughts. And there we get out. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Wayne Hutch, great show as always. Uh, folks, never forget the enemy is our corrupt political system it's not right it's not left it's not your neighbor they might be a little weird the politicians and this corrupt system they're the ones destroying the country whether they're a democrat or republican and that's why this election is important we need people that are going to help reset us back to our constitutional norm over to you Dutch. all right i hope everybody enjoyed the show uh we had a, a gentleman on the program that's fighting back. We do have warriors on our side. He happens to be a very intelligent individual. Georgia defendant Harrison Floyd yeah. catches Fannie Willis in a new crime, gives her until Monday afternoon to recuse herself from RICO case 
or face charges. She illegally recorded a phone call with his lawyer in Maryland, and Maryland is a state that both sides have to consent to being recorded. I hope he nails her to the wall. Right. There we go. All right, y'all. God bless. Have a great evening. See you tomorrow.